guys, we are back on the Independent Investor Channel, man, and it, it feels really, really good. Uh, I asked you guys a couple months back uh, to give me some personal time. I went on a hiatus a little bit, um, but now we are back and we're delivering content to folks that are looking to seek out some information on the stock market. It's one of those daunting topics, really. A lot of people just get scared off of the topic and I, I think that they end up foregoing a lot of benefits of entering into the stock market and in this video I'm going to walk you through 10 steps that I feel are critical to take and you can do it within the first 30 days. So I kind of set this challenge for you guys um, in earmarking each one of these 10 challenges for yourself. I've been investing for 25 years, so when I impart these 10 critical steps to you guys, it's from years of, of pitfalls, perils, you know, uh, mistakes that I've taken along the way and, and condensed these into the lessons that I feel are, are critical, all right? We're going to go through these 10 and explain what I mean by each one of those, and if you can do that, I think within 30 days you can put yourself on, on the right track. Uh, toward securing your financial future, guys. So I really want you to enjoy. We're going to jump right into it, all right, as we go through this list of 10 here. The first one is to set a budget. And a lot of you guys that have followed me for a long time know that I just don't even like that word. I really don't. The important key takeaway to identifying what it is that you can do with your personal budget to set you off on the right foot is to get out of the mindset of the paycheck to paycheck mentality and really start to change your way of thinking into paying yourself first, all right? And a lot of people think that you have to have money to make money. And that's a cliche that I think turns a lot of people off of the stock market, all right? It's relative to all people. And if you guys can start with as little as $25 out of your budget, what it's gonna do is it's gonna get you mentally conditioned to getting off on the right foot in paying yourself first. A lot of people just take their inflows and their outflows and you get into that rut, I think, a little bit. So the first critical step that you need to take is kind of break out of that rut, break out of your comfort zone of living paycheck to paycheck, try to earmark some peace in the budget where you can get some, some cash to deploy in the stock market, basically in line with looking to pay yourself first, all right? Number two, we've got to identify debt, all right? And again, this is a word that I don't like to even talk. I just, it, debt consumes us. It really does. In a consumer-driven society, we've got temptation coming from all different angles. The trick is to identify and acknowledge that maybe you do have a little bit of debt, okay? Now, I'm not a proponent of just paying down debt at the expense of, of a good, sound investment, portfolio or trying to build an investment portfolio for yourself, okay? I think you can kind of simultaneously do both. But if you have too big a debt, um, you really need to acknowledge that debt first and do your very best to try to take care of it. Now, in my catalog of videos, I do get into a lot more depth on how you can go about initiating some strategic ways to reduce your debt to help you guys. Because at the end of the day, that's really all I'm ever trying to do is help you guys take a step back and say, you know what, Ryan acknowledged debt. I've got a little debt there that I've just put on the side or put on the shelf for a while. Maybe it's time for us to start, you know, earmarking that debt and chipping away at it. All right. Number three, you really need to identify your assets. Okay. Now, auto and home is an easy one, but the assets that I'm talking about are if you're employed and you have an employee-sponsored retirement account, whether it be a 401k or you've got your savings account and your checking account, you need to identify those different buckets, as we call them, all right? Those are going to help strategically build this framework around your portfolio down the line, all right? Now, this is just the first 30 days here, but what we're going to try to eventually do is earmark the critical accounts that you have to have and maybe kind of do away with some of the accounts that you just don't need at all. 
and try to keep those housed within the same brokers so you've got complete visibility and access to your money um, if they're all on the same page there. But identifying what assets you have can really help understand maybe how aggressive we can be or how we can, can formulate that self-directed Roth IRA account in addition to an existing 401k plan. Very, very important. All right. The next one we need to do is just identify the participants who are going to be looking to start a retirement plan, whether it be a single person, um, whether it be a, a spouse and a spouse together starting that, um, whether or not you're going in with someone in this retirement account, you need to understand who the players are, how many accounts are going to be necessary, all right? And then as we build those accounts out to complement each other, it's going to be really, really important to understand if you're just building this wealth for yourself at the time of inception of the plan, or if we're going to be looking at starting uh, multiple portfolios at the same time and building those um, portfolios to complement each other. All right, number five, you have to define a goal. Okay, and you have to make it as realistic as possible. People all the time hit me up, how can I make seven figures in retirement? And you need to be a little less cliche than that and a little bit more specific about what you really, really want. Don't enter into investing blindly. Don't do that because you're not going to have the validation that I want you to have in why you're doing this. Are you doing it to f seek financial security in the future? I am. That's my goal. All right. And so I want you guys to kind of step back and within this first 30 day framework, identify yourself for yourself. Ask yourself, why am I investing? Why am I watching the independent investor channel? Why am I tuning in? You know, why do I have that deep desire in myself, you know, to maybe achieve something or, or seek out something that's, that's greater than what I've got now? Because a lot of people know that if they, they remain on the same path, Right? They're never going to achieve their goals. So number five is define those goals. And if you've got to write them down, write them down. But it doesn't have to be like that. I don't do that stuff, guys. But I do have my goals in mind. And that's what really keeps me grounded. And it keeps me in tune with the plan that I initiated so many years ago. All right. Number six, you have to be able to define your risk to the market. Now, a lot of people will ask me, uh, how do I define my risk if I've never had experience in the stock market? Assign yourself a number from zero to 10, all right? And I give videos that are more specific on, a specific on assigning a risk tolerance to yourself, but you really need to kind of understand if you're one of those investors that do want to get involved in investing and you've done a little homework and you are tired of your friends telling you you have to be involved, right? Um, I'm of the mindset that everyone needs to invest, but not everybody needs to invest the same way, all right? So in defining your risk tolerance, if you have a lower risk tolerance or tolerance to risk, we can adjust the amount of uh, we can adjust the amount of exposure that you have to the stock market to more be in line with the risk level that you're looking to assign to yourself, all right? Number seven, we need to choose a broker, all right? And I talk about the different brokerage houses. Really, I have my top five, Fidelity, TD Ameritrade. I like Charles Schwab. Um, I, I do like Merrill Edge. That's mine. Um, and there's a couple other that float through the channel. Certainly, M1 can get it done for you guys. Um, but at the end of the day, I encourage you to do your research with regard to the brokers out there, but don't spin your wheels too long, okay? Eventually, you're going to need to make a choice on what broker we're going to go to, and hopefully it's in line with these assets that we have over here, um, and we keep those in the same, the same location. I really think that's important for linking those accounts together and keeping the visibility on one page. I identify with a lot of people that they're spread out all over the place, and I contend that it's so much better to keep your buckets, multiple buckets, that's fine, but keep them all housed within the same broker for visibility. All right, that's something, it's kind of a key out of my own playbook, and I, I, think, it's, I think it's critical um, to keep you kind of organized and keep you all on the same page, all right? Number eight, you need to identify a dollar cost average schedule that you're comfortable with, all right? Now, this comes back to the budget piece 
in that if you identify and say, Ryan, I only have $20 a month, I'm gonna say, great, start with that. I did. I started with $25, and in retrospect, I can tell you, and I hope this resonates with you guys, I impart to you this key message, all right? It's not about the $25 at when you first start. What it's about is the beginning of getting yourself mentally conditioned to get used to paying yourself first. And that's where this dollar cost average schedule gets defined during this first 30 days, okay? Now, if you follow these steps in order and in sequence, you're gonna find that 30 days is more than enough time really to go from what I consider to be a non-investor to an investor, okay? Because guys, non-investors don't think about this stuff. They don't. And I would challenge you guys to actually go out on YouTube and look out and seek out whether or not folks are really talking in depth about some of this stuff. Risk tolerance. What broker are we looking for? You know, identifying your multiple assets and building a financial picture for yourself that is holistic in nature, guys. You're going to have a hard time finding it, all right? The next one is to familiarize yourself with the platform that you choose. It's going to be imperative. You guys are going to have to embrace investing insofar as understanding that some of your very best resources are going to be available on the broker of your choice, all right? You can get all the stock analysis that you want. You can build your watch lists. You can set up model portfolios for yourself, guys. All the answers of all the legacy questions that have ever been asked in the financial landscape, these platforms have done a great job in answering these questions for you guys. So I would charge you guys with becoming familiar with the platform that you choose, all right? And the last thing that I wanna leave with you guys, number 10, is you need to kinda of start to think about what type of investor you wanna be, all right? Now this is gonna be in line with your risk tolerance, but what I mean by this, and this is gonna get into the latter six, the 30 days, because I'm gonna take you from a non-investor to an invested investor at the end of a 60-day process, all right? Now this is your first 30 days, but this right here, we are setting the seed for you guys to ask yourself, do I wanna be a passive investor, or do I want to be a stock investor, or do I wanna be a mixture of both? And I have broken down this topic to make it very, very simple for people, it is so much more difficult to get people to determine what type of investor they want to be as opposed to what assets actually go into those accounts to make that, 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 that thought an actual reality, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this 10 things that you can do for, to take you from a non-investor to an actual investor within 30 days. That's my challenge to you guys. And if you're new to the channel, I highly encourage you to subscribe to the channel. Guys, if you know anybody that's kicking around these questions and have questions on how to go from being a non-investor to entering into the stock market, these 10, help, 10 tips can really help you guys. If I've missed something, leave your comments at the bottom of this video, guys. I'd love to review those. And lastly, I would be in debt to you if you would take and share this message Message. Uh, the channel's growing. It's growing by word of mouth, guys. People are really starting to resonate with the message here. My, my promise to you guys is that we will continue a little bit more uh, daily upload schedule for you guys so we can keep we can really keep stoking this fire for people and we want to really get excited about getting people, you know, empowered on the idea of investing, right? And we want to get them off on the right foot, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in and good luck in your investment future.